Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. This video is an unboxing and review of the American Marine Pinpoint Salinity Monitor. It pains me to say that although I was really excited to get this six months ago, it's taken me until now to finally get around to an unboxing and review. First thing out of the box is a bottle of calibration fluid. I guess I should have checked because I had no idea that it came with calibration fluid. So many of these types of monitors sell that kind of stuff separately. And because I didn't know about the calibration fluid that came with the monitor, I bought another bottle of calibration fluid. And because I wasn't paying attention to all the stuff I was buying back in the spring, I bought a third bottle of calibration fluid. So now I guess I have a lifetime supply. It's quite ironic, I have so much calibration fluid and it came in handy as you'll soon see. So right out of the box we've got your standard bubble wrap and then I think this is, yep, it's the user guide. And opening it up, inside is a conversion chart. Because the monitor measures units of electrical conductivity, it has to be converted into what we would normally use and in my case I use specific gravity. So taking it out, it's pretty hefty and seems well made. The probe itself is also heavy and the cord is very heavy duty. The battery compartment is in the usual spot on the back at the bottom and because I have another monitor from American Marine, it's my pH monitor, I knew that I would need a 9 volt battery so I had one handy so that I could install it right away. I'm not going to put the battery in place yet because I need to do the calibration and calibration involves using one of the two tiny screws that are located inside the battery compartment. Let's start by powering it on. It all looks good and on the back is a little pop-up stand which I imagine is really handy once it's all assembled properly to set it down on a table so that you can observe the readings. And now for calibration. I have this tiny screwdriver that I use to calibrate my pH monitor and so I pulled it out and I'm going to try and use it for this one. It is the right size, I've already checked and here we go. Step one is to pour the calibration fluid into a clean cup. Step one was easy. From here on in it got difficult. But before I get to the difficult part, let's just see what the reading is straight out of the box because I thought, what the heck, maybe I won't have to do any calibration at all. And sure enough, my lucky day had come. Look at that, 52.953, back and forth. So I was quite happy about this because I thought, yep, just put the battery door cover on and we're good to go. Then I realized I should probably make an attempt at checking the calibration just to see what the process involved. So I tried it and started to realize a few things. The issue here is you need to be an octopus or have two people to do this. As you can see, the cord for the probe is really stiff and thick. You have to put the probe into the water in order to calibrate it. You also have to flip over the meter in order to get access to the little tiny screw. So you've got a little tiny screwdriver that has to go into a little tiny slot in a little tiny screw. On the opposite side of where you're supposed to look to observe what the reading is. What you see here looks like it was successful. Before I go and check my tanks, I'm going to put the calibration fluid back in the bottle so that I can use it again. It was a good thing I did this, as you'll soon see. Before I put the probe in the tank, I'm just swirling it around in RODI water to remove any traces of calibration fluid. I'm looking for 51.3. That's the equivalent of 1.025, according to the conversion chart. But as the thing changes, I see that this is not good. The reading, 47.8, far too low. Basically the equivalent of 1.023. At this point, all kinds of bad things are going through my mind. When was the last time I checked salinity, let me think. Oh yeah, I've done several water changes since I got back from holidays. So maybe the salinity got messed up because of that. 
it's very easy to not get exactly the right quantity of water put back in after a water change and end up with the ATO making up the difference. So this is all swirling around in my mind and it occurred to me that it might not be a bad idea to make another attempt at calibration. First I decided to just give Mollywood a check to see where it stood. At 48.6, it wasn't as bad as Amathia's garden, but it was still too low. First thing I did was check with the calibration fluid what the reading was now, given that I thought I had adjusted it to 53. Lo and behold, it's way above 53. Now, this was bad for my tank because it meant it was reading too high, which meant my salinity levels were even lower. That is, if the meter was correct. So I spent the next 20 minutes making all of these tiny blind adjustments, trying to figure out which way to turn the screw to adjust the numbers up or down. All I could do was turn the screw, flip the meter over, look at the number when I put the probe in the water, decide which way to turn the screw, turn the screw, flip the meter over, put the probe in. I eventually decided that 53.1 was just going to have to do. So I reassembled everything and went back to the tanks to take more measurements. But of course, first I checked to make sure I didn't disrupt anything when I put the battery back in. You might recall I mentioned that it was a good thing I had so much calibration fluid. One of the things that occurred to me was that maybe there wasn't enough depth in the little cup for the probe to be covered properly. So I added all of the bottles of calibration fluid at different times to different mixes that I was checking during the calibration process. If this stuff is supposed to be calibration fluid, it shouldn't matter which bottle I use or whether they're mixed together. That was my thinking. So this at least ensured me that I had kind of an average of all of the bottles of calibration fluid, just in case there was something up with that original bottle that I used first. The other place that salinity matters is in my salt water mixing tub. Generally, if a batch has been sitting for a few days, the salinity tends to climb because of condensation from the heated water in the colder room. So that's what I expect here, is slightly high salinity. But it wasn't high, it was actually a little bit low, about equivalent to what Mollywood was, somewhere around 1.024. At this point, almost in desperation, I decided to check with a refractometer, because this is what I had always used and trusted. As luck would have it, last night I had just calibrated this refractometer. So I checked this water, and guess what? It was dead on at 1.025. I went back upstairs to check the other two tanks to see what the refractometer could tell me about the salinity here. After waiting the 30 seconds for temperature compensation, it read 1.024 in Amathia's garden, and Mollywood was 1.024 plus. By plus, I mean that the measurement was just above the line for 1.024. Just for fun, I did the readings again, and this time they turned out even lower. So that kind of makes sense if the calibration actually was at 55 and not 53. But in the long run, I am not going to be using this monitor. I don't trust it. I'm not sure I got it calibrated correctly. And if my refractometer has stood by me all these years, I calibrate it regularly, I look after it, I clean it, I rinse it after every use, there's no reason for it to let me down now. I have two refractometers. I calibrate both. I use both. And I've never run into this kind of a problem. So, monitor aside, I do have a slight issue in both tanks with slightly low salinity. It's relatively easy to fix this. I've done it before. I simply turn the ATO off and monitor the water level very closely. I'll add fresh salt water every time I see it dropping. Occasionally I'll overfill it before I go to bed at night so that the return pump has no chance of running dry. It's pretty much the same process in Mollywood, but it requires much closer attention because the water volumes involved are so much smaller. So in the end, for me, the American Marine Pinpoint Salinity Monitor has been a fail. 
As part of the process of doing this video, I read some reviews, and calibration came up frequently as a big issue. One reviewer commented that this monitor should be recalibrated before each use. Well, where's the convenience in that? Where's the time saving? And further than that, for me, is the trust issue. What if I can never be 100% sure I've done the calibration correctly? What if the battery hits that screw often when I put it back in the case? How can I be sure that hasn't happened without going through gallons of calibration fluid? Because that calibration fluid will only last so long between spilling and residue left on the probe and simply aging and exposing to air and oxidizing. I'd have to replace it frequently. So in the end, what am I gaining over a refractometer? I bought this monitor on sale for 110 US dollars. Not cheap. And if it's not going to do its job, that causes even more problems. On the bright side though, at least I identified a small issue with both tanks. And that's something that could have blown up over time had I not caught it now. I do regularly check salinity, but it's been a while and it's something I'm going to have to stay on top of going forward. Because I've had this thing for over six months, I don't believe I can return it. So I'll be removing the battery and filing it away in a drawer somewhere. Maybe someone will come along who actually wants it. You never know. And in the meantime, I'll be watching the performance of the new HANA salinity and temperature checker just to see how things go with the people who have got them already. This wasn't available when I bought this pinpoint monitor, but if it had been, I probably would have gone with that because of the dual features. But oh well, that's how it goes in reefing, something new around the corner every day. And if anybody spots anything I did wrong or can give me some suggestions, I would be very happy to hear from you in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it.